Well, there I was just scrolling Twitter, working as one does, and I ran across something really, really interesting. This is a brand new package called React TS Form from a guy named Isaac William, guy I follow on Twitter. He's really great. Make sure you go follow him, take a look at his stuff. He created a thing called TRPC Panel, pretty insane package. I was working on something similar and his is a hundred times better than what I'm gonna end up building, but I still wanna do it for the experience and I'll talk about that later. But the point here is he built this new package called React TS Form. So what is this? This is a new package built on top of react hook form it removes all the stuff you typically have to deal with with state so you don't have to custom map state to every single input it makes it way easier to create reusable components and component based forms it sort of just abstracts a lot of the base level nonsense of react away from you but here here we've taken it another step further if we take a look at this right here on the github his little animation here if you take a look all that code collapsed that's it all it is is we can just create these schemas and then using Zod, which is the package underneath TRPC, is the thing that makes TRPC so crazy, defining these schemas and then just generating API routes off of them, we're doing the same thing, but with forms now. So let's take a look at how this actually works in code. So right here, I'm just gonna start out with going through all the different pieces you get here. And there is a bit of boilerplate here you'll see, but once you kind of look at it and realize that you only ever you only ever have to do this once it's pretty insane so step zero is you need to create your components so obviously every form is made up of components we can have text inputs number inputs date inputs whatever you want in this example i'm just going to do text field because this is literally hours old i just want to make sure that i get you know truth be told first mover advantage on this this is pretty crazy so i want to get this out as fast as humanly possible so going to do this little basic example with text fields kind of just get this in your hands so Right here with this text field, all I'm doing is I am just making an input, but then in here I'm bringing in use TS controller. So I'm assuming under the hood that he's setting up some global context with all of this, though I'm not entirely certain to be completely honest how all this works. I'll look at the code base in the future, but effectively you can think of this as working kind of like context where you don't even have to worry about everything else. You can just call this use TS controller hook and then pull in the field and error. So if we need to handle an error, we can just pass it down here. It's fully type safe, so we get type safe error messaging. We can have error message and then you know print it out there as you would and then the field itself is what we can do to go ahead and map all of that stuff the way we would in a normal react uh, input field so if you look here you can see we have value is field dot value we have field dot on change we can do e pass in e dot target dot value so this is sort of similar to like a normal use state where we would have the value and then the setter function so the getter and the setter but what's interesting here is this is completely and utterly reusable and i'll show you that in a second here and then finally the last thing is we can pass in props here. So I'm passing in input type as a prop because down here I need to say, you know, sometimes if we have a text input, that could be a um, password or that could be an email or whatever. And different HTML um, built in things will. We need to pass we need to tell html what that is your password should not be rendered as a number box or vice versa or whatever so you can pass that in here as a parameter and this is also completely type safe too so go to that in a second next up we have the mappings the mapping is basically just generating a list of mapping your component to a zod object so if you're familiar with zod if you basically ever use trpc you've seen this and essentially what this is doing is this is going to define anytime we pass in a string here so anytime we put a string into our schema later it's going to then generate a text field off of that so it'll create a key value pair where we'll have the key that we pass in later of say email and then that will generate an, a text field that's linked to that email. If we had more different components in here. We could add like a number box or whatever. In fact, actually, let me go ahead and do that real quick. That should actually, that should be shown. I can create that. That's not too hard. All right, so. Getting back into it, I went ahead and I added in that checkbox field. So it's very simple, just like above, we're gonna use this use TS controller, which will allow us to pull the field and error off for this guy. So since it's a Boolean, since we're gonna map it to the Boolean object, went ahead and just pulled that out. Then I can go down here and just create my basic input type of checkbox. Now I can put whatever component I want in here. I could put a calendar in here. I could put a full paragraph in here. I could put as it does not matter at all what you put in here. And you don't even have to technically map to these. You could just shoot yourself in the 
foot and put whatever. But the idea is that you'll then use this field.value and this field.on change to then control everything within your form. So we go ahead and do that. Then we can create this mapping down here. So the key is this as const is necessary. To tell you the truth, I am not enough of a TypeScript wizard to tell you why. All I know is that the language is uh, very interesting and will do things like this. And I don't know why, but it's doing it. So we've got this as const down here, but the really important, but the really important part is this z dot string being mapped to the text field and z dot boolean being mapped to checkbox field. So we have all of this. Then we generate our form component. This will just generate a JS JSX element that we can then use down with in our actual render section. Then we define the signup schema. So we're going to define an email of z.string. And then Zod has some built-in uh, parsing and functionality for emails. So we can just say z.email. And then if we don't have an email in there, this is the error that it'll pass out. So it'll pass out, please enter a real email. And then we can pass in password as a string, notifications on as a Boolean. So remember up there, we just created our Boolean. Then finally, we can just render this stuff out. To just render this, all we need to do is we first pass the on submit. So this is just like any normal form and this will just be called on submit basically. So here we will take in our data and what's great is this data is type safe. It's just like you would get from the original React hook form, except now we have even nicer because all of this can be reused anywhere you want. And I'll show you that in a moment. But so we just take our data out. We can pass in an alert of, hey, we submitted this. So I'm just gonna you know show you the JSON. Render after is just whatever we want to show after our form. So here we want to pass the submit button afterwards. Um, you could, um, yeah, this is just the submit button for afterwards. Doesn't really matter. The schema is the key right here. So this schema is going to be the signup schema. So if you remember, we defined all these fields. And since this form knows what our mappings are, it can just use the stuff in here to generate out our actual um, JSX. Then we pass in our props. So like I said above, the two different things will have props in them. The text field has an optional prop of input type. So the email doesn't need this because it's just a normal text input. We don't really care. So it'll just do input type of text, but the password needs to be input type of password. So on the password component, so I'm going to pass in the key of password. I'm going to pass in input type of password. And what's even more insane about this is this is type safe too. So I pass in input not there. And then I said, this is invalid. Yes, Copilot, I know it's invalid. So there we go. He yells at me. Beautiful. So we can go ahead and do that. Input type of password, then notifications on. Remember, we have this input name up here. So this actually should be a required prop. So we have our required prop of input name because we need to you know, tell you what you're checking on or off. So we set up this input name up here and then we can go ahead down here, pass it in. And now with all that done, Let's go to the browser and we can just see this right here. So I have test at gmail.com, a random password. I just smashed the keyboard and then receive notifications. Nice little checkbox. We'll head to go ahead and submit and we can see what data we've got. And then if I change this, submit it again. And there it is. So you can sort of hopefully see the implications of this. So what's insane is how easily this can be reused and abstracted. This my form component can be exported and used anywhere. And the thing is, we just need to create a new schema on each page. So with React hook form, there was a little bit of code you had to do every time. You had to like create the inputs and run it in and then maybe import components, but then you had to keep track of all the components and it got really gross. But now we have a single source of truth for our forms. And I think that is really insane and I'm super excited for that. So this package is absolutely in its infancy. It is brand new, like six hours ago, like I said. So it is, you know, use it at your own risk but I have full confidence that it's going to get to a great spot. I, um, full disclaimer, I did try this out in like, I figured the easiest way to do it was I did like a create T3 app on it and that did not end up, it ended up having some issue with like module things, ES build being ES build. Don't really know what happened there. I'm sure that'll be fixed for fixed very soon, but go ahead and spin up like a new V app, give this a try. And I'm very excited for the future of this. This is really, really sweet. Isaac, incredible work. As always, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, that's it.